Hello, Salesforce Ohana, Walters954 here. Today I'll be answering questions from you, the Salesforce community. If you want to ask me something, just leave a comment down below. This audio was recorded in a mentoring session without video, so sit back and enjoy the configuration while I answer. If you're interested in getting a mentoring session, check out salesforcementor.com. Alrighty. What is my typical day as a Salesforce developer? Um, and this has evolved over time a lot, um, it depending on which stage in my career that I'm at. So now that I'm a senior developer, um, I do a lot more design, um, big picture type things, and uh, less, I'll say less coding, um, and more communication and talking with leadership. But I think for you all, and when you're trying to think about Salesforce and the type of roles that you may get originally. Um, it's more like a junior or mid-level developer type of position. And when I think back to how I originally started out, you know, I was just a lone developer at a company um, down here in Florida with a, a team of other admins that I worked with. And my day-to-day -day was mostly, um, it was a lot of coding. So we would get certain projects or requests that came in through the business, um, the senior admin would distill them down into their uh, different parts. So maybe some pieces we need to, we needed to um, build triggers or update certain triggers and other pieces we need to build automation and workflows and things like that. So the, the senior admin would kind of split the project up to where it needed to go. I got my specific requirements. Um, the other admins got their own requirements. And then we all worked together to kind of bring it together in the end and, uh, you know, make the project come alive. So that's when I worked on a development team. I also worked as a solo developer once I got, you know, a little bit past the junior um, stages. So that was me sort of um, getting all of the requirements, having to break it down and figure out how everything worked um, and create the actual code itself. So that may have been just the, the business or the company that you're working with coming and saying like, hey, I need this page for all of the sales reps to calculate all of these values here. And from there, you have to run with just that little piece of information to either talk to various people in the company and understand what you actually needed to get done to build this thing. And the main key difference I want to kind of point out is that throughout this process, depending on what stage you are or what type of role you're going for, you will have requirements or you will not. Um, and that's the big thing that I think separates like a junior developer position versus a more mid-level developer position is if you're able to figure out what you need to get done from just, you know, a blanket statement from a CEO or a VP of something that just says, hey, I need this done versus somebody uh, that actually knows Salesforce and is giving you specific requirements on how to do something. As you all look for your different roles, I would assume for the most part, a lot of you will try to go into junior roles, um, and that is perfectly fine. I started out as a junior role, um, making 50k, right? As a as a, it's, it didn't say junior Salesforce developer, but I was still I was just a Salesforce developer. I didn't know that much, and my requirements were pretty much handed to me. Um, and gradually work your way into that that level of experience where you're saying, hey, I can now, uh, I don't need somebody to break this down for me. If you tell me what needs to get done, I can, I can build it. And that's just learning, continuing to build your experience, learning the best practices of Salesforce as a developer, and then moving towards being self-sufficient and not as reliant on other people to spoon feed you information, but to be able to grab that information yourself. So right now as a consultant, my day starts at, since I'm remote, it depends, I think it depends on the day. If I'm really lazy, my day starts at like 8.35. I just wake up, brush my teeth, and then sit in front of the computer, you know? Um, so it's really, being remote, it's really easy to just wake up sit in front of the computer at nine o'clock, you know, and start coding. For me, I'm, I'm doing a lot of emails. So going back and forth, checking with the team to see what they are working on. 
Um, and then when I can, I will either assist the team get actually do some code throughout the process and work on uh, different aspects of whatever project I'm working on. And for me, that could be like three or four different orgs that I'm working in at a time, just because as a consultant, you can be in that many different orgs. Um, it really depends on the size of your projects and what you're you're working on. And then probably about one o'clock, one thirty, I will after like all any meetings or emails or actual coding, I will take a break. So going outside to decompress from the early morning, uh, eating, and I'll probably read. Um, I'm currently reading um, advanced Apex coding, or. Apex language. I don't remember the name of the book, but I can I can send it out after this. Um, and I try not to like stare at a screen all day long. It's good to take breaks and decompress for a little bit. Probably about an hour, I will go back to work. So spending you know the rest of the day on any additional meetings, any additional code code review, um, just working with the general team or even chatting with anybody that I need to internally. Um, and I, I try to kind of follow this process wherever I work that. So definitely taking a break. That's that's a big thing um, with me is taking a break, getting away from the computer so you don't end up burning out. And being being as social as you can. So talking to uh, people of other departments, talking to your uh, people in your current department, things like that. Or just reaching out to people online to, to talk with them on LinkedIn or something like that. Um, but yeah, so ending my day, uh, it may, I said typically, typically it ends at around 6, 630. So I will continue, you know, going through my code, whatever else that I need to get done to finish my work for that specific day. Um, and then right about then I'll probably shut everything down, leave whatever else for tomorrow. Every once in a while, I do have to work late. So there, being a consult in the consulting world, you'll have to do some like 10 hour, 12 hour days um, just to hit deadlines or reach whatever goal you're trying to reach. And every so often you do have to work weekends. Um, say you have a big go live or there's a process that needs to be implemented over the weekend so you don't disrupt um, the user's flows. You can, you will have to work on the weekends, but uh, that's kind of the trade-off. Normally, when I've worked at individual companies, I wasn't really working over the weekends. There's, it's like a, it's a slower pace and less of a less pressure, I will say. But that comes with the territory. You know, that's the trade-off with consulting. You may be learning more and getting paid more versus being at a regular company where you aren't getting paid as much, but it's uh, a slower pace and you're kind of building your own culture and you're building that company uh, individually. I do like to have scrum meetings every day. Um, if the project is huge, you know, we need to scrum every morning to make sure everybody's on track. There's no blockers or anything like that. Familiarize yourself with agile and um, scrum methodology because it does play a really big role in what you all are learning and being you know in the Salesforce ecosystem. Thank you all so much for watching. If this video was helpful, make sure to smash that like button. I mean really smash it. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this. And if you're interested in a mentoring session just like we had here, be sure to check out salesforcementor.com. There's a mentoring section with awesome mentors, not just myself. As always, remember, I believe in you.